So in this video, I'm going to talk about something that is usually uh, unexplained in the heat transfer classes. I will be talking about the efficiency of heat exchanger. So efficiency of heat exchanger is denoted by epsilon and it is defined as the ratio of uh, actual heat transfer rate to the maximum heat transfer rate. So here Q is the actual heat transfer rate and uh, Q max is the maximum heat transfer rate. Now, uh, now the main problem here is to find out what a maximum heat transfer rate actually is. Uh, this heat transfer rate is uh, in principle be achieved could in principle be achieved in a counterflow heat exchanger of infinite length. But why infinite length? We will know it shortly. So let's see how a, a counterflow heat exchanger actually looks like. So uh, so in this heat exchanger we have uh, two concentric tubes, and in the outer tube the hot fluid is flowing from left to right, and uh, in the inner tube the cold fluid is moving from right to left. So this is so the THI here is the input is the input temperature of the inlet temperature of the hot fluid and uh, THO is the outlet temperature of the hot fluid whereas TS, TCI is the, inlet, is the inlet temperature of the cold fluid and TCO is the outlet temperature of the cold fluid. So here this is called a counter fluid exchanger because uh, the hot fluid because the direction uh, of the hot fluid and uh, the cold fluid is actually opposite. The hot fluid is moving from left to right whereas the cold fluid is moving is moving from right to left. So we can see more clearly in the T versus X diagram where T is the temperature and X is the length of the of the heat exchanger is the position of the heat exchanger we can see that uh, this is THI is the maximum temperature we can have in the heat exchanger and TCI is the lowest temperature we can have in the heat exchanger and this is the outlet temperature and this is the out the temperature of the cold fluid where this is the outlet temperature of the of the hot fluid and we can see this arrow is showing the the direction of movement of the hot fluid the uh, hot fluid is moving from left to right whereas the cold fluid is moving from right to left and uh, from the intuition we can say that the temperature of the outlet of the cold fluid can be can exceed the temperature of the outlet of the hot fluid without violating the second law of thermodynamics unlike in concurrent flow where it can never happen it violates the second law of thermodynamics so now let's define uh, what uh, heat transfer rate is so heat transfer rate is denoted by q and uh, this q is equal to m times cp times delta t the absolute value of delta t where m is the mass flow rate and cp is the specific heat capacity and delta t is the temperature difference between the outlet and the inlet of uh, the hot or the or of the cold fluid so here i'm defining a new term the product of m times cp the product of uh, mass flow rate uh, times the specific heat capacity is called heat capacity rate which has the unit of joule per degree, uh, degree celsius per second now let's see now let's see how we can make uh, the heat transfer rate maximum. So here, mass flow rate is constant, Cp is, is of course a constant, and the only thing that can change here is the delta T. And if we have large delta T, we are going to have a maximum heat transfer rate. So we can say that delta T is proportional to Q. So if we increase T, if we increase delta T, the Q also in increases. So note here that in the delta T here I'm taking the absolute value of the change of temperature because the delta T is negative for a hot fluid and since Q is scalar it can never be negative. Now how can we find out the maximum temperature difference in the counterflow heat exchanger? For this let's see in the graph. So here THI is the maximum temperature that the heat exchanger can have and TCI which is the inlet temperature of the cold fluid this is the lowest temperature we can have in the in the heat exchanger so we can say that the maximum uh, temperature difference we can have in the counter fluid exchanger is this THI minus TCI where THI is the inlet temperature of the hot fluid and TCI is the inlet temperature of the cold fluid so the maximum temperature difference is THI minus TCI now, how can we know which fluid is going to experience the maximum temperature difference? So, for this, it depends on the value of the heat capacity rate here. Uh, CC is the heat capacity rate of the cold fluid and CH is the heat capacity rate of the hot fluid. Now, let's see a situation where the heat capacity rate of the cold fluid is less than the heat capacity rate of the hot, of the hot fluid. Now, uh, we can derive a conclusion that uh, if this is the case, we are going to have the temperature difference for the cold fluid greater than the temperature difference for the hot fluid. I can demonstrate how we obtained uh, this result. For this, uh, 
we can use the conservation of energy principle. So we know the heat received by the cold fluid is equal to the heat uh, given off by the hot fluid and uh, the heat given off by the hot fluid is uh, Cs times delta, T, delta Th and uh, the heat received by cold fluid is going to be uh, Cc times delta Tc and since we know that the heat capacity rate for the cold fluid is greater than the heat capacity rate for the cold fluid we can derive this conclusion using uh, these calculations so if ch by c by cc is greater than one which means the delta tc is greater than delta th now uh, we can see that uh, the the delta t for the cold fluid is greater than uh, is higher than the delta t for the hot fluid and if we have a heat exchange of infinite length we will have enough length we will have enough length such that uh, the outlet temperature of the cold fluid will be heated to the inlet temperature of the, of the of the hot fluid so we'll have enough time such that this cold fluid will be heated to the temperature of the inlet of the hot fluid and at the end this happens because they will be in the thermal equilibrium with each with each other so if we have infinite length this temperature of the of the cold fluid will be equal to the inlet temperature of the hot fluid and uh, we know that the expression for the heat transfer for the cold fluid is uh, cc times uh, temperature of the outlet minus temperature of the inlet for the cold fluid and uh, since and since uh, we have uh, infinite length the outlet temperature is going to be equal to the inlet temperature of the hot fluid so we can replace this term with thi and since we know that the maximum temperature difference is this this term over here and this term over here are the same so it means if we have maximum temperature difference over here we are also going to have the maximum heat transfer so the maximum heat transfer rate uh, expression for the cold fluid is going to be cc times delta t maximum a similar conclusion can be derived for the hot fluid uh, for the hot for the hot fluid for the second situation the second situation we have is that the heat capacity rate for the hot fluid is going to be less than the heat capacity of the cold fluid and using the similar conservation of energy principle we can uh, derive a fact that the change of temperature of the hot fluid is greater than the change of temperature of the change of temperature of the cold fluid and if the heat exchange is, a, is of infinite length we will have enough length such that the outlet of the hot fluid will be cooled down to the inlet of the cold fluid so at the end this outlet uh, uh, hot fluid will be in thermal equilibrium with the inlet temperature of the cold fluid the thing is it is going to get cooled to this temperature over here and it is going to experience the maximum temperature difference so in this case the hot fluid is going to experience the maximum temperature difference now the expression for the hot fluid for the heat transfer was this and uh, so I can replace this uh, term tho with tci and since this term and this term are the same i can say that this q over here is now going to be the heat maximum heat transfer rate uh, so we can conclude uh, that the maximum heat transfer rate is going to be equal to c min which is the minimum heat capacity minimum heat capacity rate out of the two of, of either of the cold or hot fluid times thi minus tci which is the maximum temperature difference so the expression here says that if you if you want to find the maximum heat transfer rate you are going to take the value of the take the value of the of the heat capacity rate that is smaller times the maximum temperature difference so you are saying the fluid with the minimum heat transfer rate is going to experience the maximum heat transfer uh, difference uh, the maximum uh, temperature difference and it is and it is going to give the value for the maximum heat transfer rate for example if you have uh, if you have uh, the cc as 400 and ch as 500 since the cc is 400 which is less than 500 we are going to take this value this cc as c minimum to find out the q maximum and since this is smaller it is obviously going to experience the maximum temperature difference and it is going to give the value for the maximum heat transfer rate now comes the real question why can't we use q max is equal to c max times the maximum temperature difference why can't we use why is this not possible this is not possible because it is going to violate the conservation of energy law so let's see uh, what the conservation of energy law says so it says the heat received by the cold fluid is uh, equal to the heat given off by the hot fluid so it is going to be equal to the 
product of the heat capacity rate of the cold fluid times the output of the cold fluid minus uh, inlet of the cold fluid and uh, this is going to be equal to the heat capacity rate of the hot fluid times the inlet of the hot fluid minus outlet of the hot fluid here the here the direction is reversed the position is reversed because this cannot be because this cannot be negative now we are going to assume that the heat capacity rate for the cold fluid is greater than the heat capacity of the hot fluid so it means the cc is going to be c max in, in this case so this is saying that uh, we have the heat, the cold fluid has the higher heat capacity rate and it is the same fluid that is going to experience the maximum maximum temperature difference what we derived over here was the fluid with the minimum heat capacity rate is going to experience the maximum temperature difference but what we are assuming here is that the fluid with the with the maximum heat capacity rate is going to uh, experience the maximum temperature difference so this is max this is max the result is obviously going to be max but this is not possible so assuming that the the fluid with the maximum heat capacity rate is going to experience the maximum uh, temperature difference uh, we can say that the if it is infinite length the outlet of the cold fluid is going to be equal to the inlet of the hot fluid this is the same uh, thing we derived over here and uh, by putting the values uh, by putting the value of the cold of tco is equal to thi we can we can write this expression and now since c max by ch is going to be greater than one because c max is cc i have replaced here cc with c max because it is of course c max and since this value is greater than one we can do some basic algebra and we can uh, get the result we can get the conclusion that tci is greater than tho this is saying that the inlet of the cold fluid uh, is going to be higher than the outlet of the hot fluid which is obviously not possible because the heat always flows from the hot fluid to the cold fluid as and not and not the contrary we can see so we can see from the graph that the hot fluid is moving from left to right and the cold fluid is moving from right to left and its temperature is increasing as it is moving from right to left so it is absorbing heat from the hot fluid which is only possible when the temperature of the hot temperature of the outlet of the hot fluid is greater than the inlet of the cold fluid fluid otherwise it is not going to absorb the heat from here so tci can never be greater than the temperature of the outlet of the hot fluid so this result over here that we got is impossible which makes this equation in, in incorrect so the fact that q max can be obtained by using the c max times the maximum times the difference is wrong the conclusion we, we can have over here is that q max is always going to be equal to c min times the maximum times the difference now at the end let's define the efficiency once again so efficiency is q by q max where q for the cold fluid is this is the q is the actual heat transfer rate so for the cold fluid is going is going to be cc times the temperature difference between the outlet and the inlet of the cold fluid and where q max is of course c min times maximum times difference and this the same expression can be derived in terms of the hot fluid because the q actual rate uh, the heat transfer actual rate is uh, for the hot fluid is cs times the temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet of the hot fluid and q max is obviously going to be c min times maximum temperature difference